Because we're about to Good move to, to energy. Good to see you. Will Pat Vincent Colon join us, please, as we do move to the important field for New Mexico? And I wasn't trying to minimize Senator Domenici's discussion of it, because it is important. But we have so much to cover. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Pat is the CEO of PNM. Oh, yeah. Uh, so what can you tell us about Senator Bingham's work in this area? Well, as you know, there's not enough time tonight to discuss all of the Senator's work. But I'm going to try to hit some highlights. But first, Senator, I have a confession to make. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I, I'm just a reporter. I won't say a word about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it wrong. So go okay. ahead. As a new CEO, I have to say, I was always terrified to go into your office because you're the dean of energy policy. And Senator Bingaman always knew more about energy policy than everybody else. You were always very gracious to me, but I have to tell you, I was terrified to go into your office. Um, twice the senator, for a combined total of about 10 years, was head of the very powerful Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee. He's been instrumental in passing some amazing legislation that has helped protect our environment, supports energy conservation, increased cafe standards, and invest in green energy technology. And the Senator is known, both in Washington, New Mexico, and beyond, as a passionate advocate for both our beautiful environment and for energy conservation. Uh, the Senator played a role in passing two major, I think the only major energy policy bills that have been passed. In 2005, um, President Bush signed into law the Energy Policy Act right here in Albuquerque at Sandia Labs. And that was designed to address some growing energy problems by changing tax policy and providing some loan guarantees. Then in 2007, Senator Bingaman did it again. He was the lead sponsor of the Energy Independence and Security Act. This was a historic increase to fuel economy, biofuels, and mandated the highest standards in energy efficiency that we have in US history. And shortly be before Senator Bingaman left office, he um, reflected on Congress's inability to pass any major energy policy legislation and advised his colleagues to, to eat the elephant one bite at a time, my words, you were much more eloquent, but to pass some smaller pieces of legislation and to tackle some things like energy efficiency and get it done that way in a very, very bipartisan way manner. And I hope, Senator, that they listen to you on that. Um, given your passion for energy technology and green energy, it's not surprising you're now at Stanford uh, in a professorship there. And I'm looking forward to hearing more about your continued passion and work in this area. And on behalf of myself and all New Mexicans, Senator, thank you. We owe you a huge debt of gratitude for everything you have done for our environment. Well, Pat, thank you very much. Let me Without you posing a question, Sam, let me just say, anything that we accomplished of major consequence there in the Energy Committee was done jointly with Pete. Pete was the chair of the committee when we did the 2005 bill. I was the ranking member. I worked with him on that, but uh, he deserves a lion's share of the credit there. In 2007, I was the chair, but he was the ranking member. Again, we got a good bill through, in my view. Both bills were important, but just like the founding of this New Mexico First organization was done in a bipartisan way, uh, the passage of those bills was bipartisan. And, and so I don't want to leave, allow anyone to leave here with the impression that I hung the moon and uh, everybody else watched. That's, that's not the way it worked. Uh, we got a few things done that were useful, and, and Pete deserves great credit for it. But you have just said something very important. Beginning in 1961, off and on, I've covered the United States Congress, and I have never seen two senators from the same state, opposite parties, who've worked together so closely and harmoniously for the good of the state and the country as the two of you. I've never seen it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now let's see if I can pour a little kerosene on this fire. <laughs> let's talk about the need to develop oil and gas new shale technology, all of that, and also the need to protect our environment. The two may be compatible, but when you listen to some people, it's either one or the other. Mm -hmm. So lead us off here, Senator Bingaman. Well, I, I think uh, 
they generally, uh, we need to do all, all of it. And uh, we have a strong history of, of oil and gas development and production in New Mexico, and that will continue and should continue. And, uh, and I believe it can be done in a responsible way, environmentally responsible way. Uh, we, we need to be sure that uh, uh, proper oversight is, is exercised and, and po proper regulation uh, occurs, and I think we can do that. But, uh, but, but I do think we have a great benefit for our country in the, in the discovery of all this new uh, shale gas and oil that, that is coming from, uh, from these uh, very deep formations. Uh, so, so that's good. I, I, I think, though, my, my own concern, frankly, is that uh, everyone is so enthusiastic about all these new oil and gas findings that we will essentially uh, pull back on our efforts to develop other sources of energy, and we will relax our, our efforts to, to research and, and pursue uh, less emitting types of, to, of energy. I, I think for that last one? less emitting uh, less types emitting. of energy. Uh, Pete's always been a, a strong advocate for nuclear power, and, and, and I support nuclear power as well. Uh, I, think there, I think when you look uh, ahead 10, 20, 30 years, uh, nuclear power needs to continue to be a significant part of the energy mix. And it's going to require an investment in research and, and development of these new small modular nuclear reactors that are, that are coming on. I'm afraid that the enthusiasm for doing that, the enthusiasm for renewable energy, solar and wind and, and other uh, types of energy will, will uh, weaken because of everyone's uh, enthusiasm about, uh, about shale gas and shale oil. And I think that would be a big mistake. Well, uh, Jeff's done a wonderful job summarizing this. Uh, I would, um, and I'm getting, a, I guess when you pass 75, you have an excuse when you, when you don't know something, you can always say, I'm losing my memory. Uh, <laughs> that's what's I, happening I, I, I do it frequently. And that's happening to you too. I saw you practice. You weren't nearly as good in your practice. <laughs> Remember what the great man said: the, a mind is a terrible thing to lose. And you could have, and you could have, you could have fessed up, but you didn't. You just kept working hard like a beaver. <laughs> That's great. But l let me remind ev everyone: uh, uh, what's happened uh, to the United States is that natural gas has tumbled in price from thirteen dollars and fifty cents. Now this is natural gas that. It's, it takes about 25% of the American, 20% of the American economy uses natural gas, so big ticket item. Uh, all of the things that Dow Chemical makes, the basic, basic thing there is, uh, is uh, CO2. So uh, what, ha what happened, now here it really is my 81st chime in, I don't remember what I was going to tell you, but it's coming if you just be patient with me. <laughs> what, what I was going to say was that um, they, it, it went from $13.25 to $2.50. Do you understand what that means? I mean, that's incredible. Uh, now, the, everybody is slobbering, saying, you know, are we going to have this natural gas this cheap? Jeff raises a good, pro good question. We should not forget about the other sources of energy, and obviously natural gas cannot be that cheap, but... but we do have new ways to develop it, and the side benefit that's happened to us, that maybe, maybe you've read about it, maybe not, but let me say it anyway, and that's, we found crude oil in the shale deposits, so it's not only natural gas. We have found huge amounts of crude oil that we can get either by fracking or by the other means of, of drilling, horizontal drilling. I want to tell you, both of those technologies are, are, are real technology breakthroughs in the field of developing that energy. And I will tell you also, and we, we, we set it up there in meetings, but it didn't seep down to New Mexico, but our, both of our laboratories over the last 20 years were tremendously involved with the industry in developing the new technology. And in the end, they could not, we could not be bragging about what we're bragging about if Sandia National Laboratory 
with two of its scientists, had not used money that we put in. Some of them said we shouldn't put it in because it was uh, us telling the government what to do. Well, we did it anyway. We thought we knew, and <laughs> we put it in, and it was used for 10 years. And, and sure enough, uh, it's, they, they, they were the finishing touches to what is now fracking came from the laboratories in terms of finding it, determining its size, and being able to use it. All right, when I thank found you. That, I was terribly excited, and I'm bound and determined to convince people that research and development in the national labs can help America. It isn't just a boondoggle throwing money away. I think New Mexicans agree with you. Thank you, you Senator. Best. You'd be better. It's true. Yeah. 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 But Ms. Vincent Prolon, now talk to us the balance between developing fossil fuels, other forms of energy, and protecting the environment all at the same time. It's a balancing act, but it can be done. I think both senators eloquently said we need all fuels, just like in your own investment portfolio. You don't want to run after the latest fad. And Senator Bingaman is absolutely right. With the advent of shale gas, we're forgetting about some, we're forgetting about nuclear, we're forgetting about clean coal, and sometimes we forget about renewables. So we need to continue to develop all sources, but you can frack and you can drill responsibly, and you can use fossil fuels responsibly. We all know that coal emits greenhouse gases. We're shutting down with the help of our senators shutting down two of our coal units up at San Juan. It'll reduce greenhouse gases there by about 50%, but we have to balance affordability for New Mexicans in that equation. So that's not, we're not shutting down all four at once. But we need to develop all those sources and we need to be responsible. And I think what the senators say is if you get the, the research and development, you get the government, you get the educational institutions, and you get businesses collaborating and working in bipartisan things, we can find solutions to this problem. And right now, we don't have uh, carbon capture and storage technologies available commercially, commercially yet. We don't have storage quite figured out yet. We're working on it, on renewables, and we've got some demonstration projects here. But if we just sit down like reasonable people and talk about how to get those solutions, we can get there. We can develop all of our resources, and we can do it responsibly. Everybody just has to be able to compromise to get it done. I know, and that's, be, a, that's a bad word.